Hi, today I'm going to introduce you to Redwood JS. I'm Tom Preston Werner. You can find me online at Mojambo on Twitter and GitHub. You may remember me as the founder of such companies as GitHub and Chatterbug, the best place online to learn a foreign language. You may also remember me from my projects such as Jekyll, Semantic Versioning, Toml, and Gravatar. Now I know what you're wondering, what is Redwood? Well, the easiest way to say it is that Redwood is bringing full stack to the Jamstack. I'm going to show you how that works with a little tour through a Redwood application. So I have here in front of me github.com slash redwoodjs slash example to do, which is a simple to do app written in Redwood. And I'm going to just uh, follow the instructions here. I have it cloned down on my computer. I've already run yarn on it to get everything installed. And so I'm going to type yarn redwood db up, which is going to use Prisma migrations to bring the database uh, up to speed for me. And then I'm going to run the dev server with yarn rw, short for redwood, dev. This is going to start the back end and the front end. Redwood applications have two sides to them, which you can see in the code browser here. You have a web side and an API side. Redwood applications are React on the front end and their GraphQL APIs on the back end that we can deploy to AWS Lambda, makes it really easy if you're using something like Netlify, and GraphQL communicates back and forth to them. So I have now my dev server running locally. And so I'm going to pull that up by going to localhost port 8910. And here we have my to-do app. Um, and uh, let's buy some groceries. So I need eggs, milk, and cheese. You can see that I can uh, tick them off or not. Uh, if you want to inspect what's going on, you can see that indeed these are GraphQL calls in the back end. Here's the request uh, mutation, and here's the response the data that comes back. So let's take a little bit of a tour through the code base here. On the, let's start on the API side with the GraphQL API. We have in here a source directory and a GraphQL directory and a services directory. Now we call the backend organizational pattern in Redwood services. And those are organizational chunks that you can use to keep yourself from getting in trouble. So in a simple to-do app, you might only have one service. But in other more complicated apps, you might have many services. So we're going to split up our GraphQL API into multiple chunks. And uh, the, you can have it split into as many files as you want. Here we just have todos.js inside the GraphQL directory. This is your GraphQL SDL file, schema definition language. Here we have a to-do type with an ID, a body, and a status. We have a to-dos query to get a list of the to-do items. And then we have mutations to create a to-do, update a to-do, and rename a to-do. Another nice thing about Redwood is that it comes with a GraphQL browser inspector here. So this is running whenever your app is running. And so if we want to do a query and just get a list of to-dos and get the ID, the body, and the status, we can run that, and you'll see here's our information in GraphQL form. So the way that these are implemented, we decided to do away with the boilerplate and simply map a set of functions that you export from this services file with the same names as they are in the GraphQL schema file, and Redwood will do this mapping for you. So instead of writing a resolver map, all you have to do is export functions with the right names. So here we have the to-dos list that's going to uh, use Prisma to uh, Prisma 2 to um, pull the information out of the database. So here we have db.todo.findmany to get your to-dos. Here's how you create a to-do. You can update a to-do or rename a to-do. And those you can see over here in the docs tab, or you can get a full list of the schema that's all stitched together from the various files that you would have in a more complex application. Now, on the front side, let's see how we consume this. So on the web side, we have a routes.js file. This is where everything starts. So a request comes in, it needs to know what page to load. So we've written our own router, and it makes this really easy. It's just going to go down this list of routes and find the first match. So when we go to the home page, it's going to match slash to the home page. So let's look at home page. That's in the pages directory, home page. And here's that file. All it's doing is using some style components for styling and gives it a, a title and a to-do cell list. And now let's look at what this uh, to-do list cell uh, is doing. A cell in Redwood is a special pattern that we've created to make data fetching declarative. 
So that lives in components, to-do list cell. And here we have uh, the, the, the cell. Up here at the top, you can see the query that it's doing. So this is the same as a query I just ran in the inspector. To-dos, ID body status. And whatever this is called, you have um, the ability to pass that the results on success into a component that you export called success. You also have other states, loading. You can also export a failure state or an empty state. Here, we just have a loading and success state. And in that success state, we are showing our list of to-do items right here. Those are a list of to-do item components, which live right here. And in here, you can see that we're just listing out the body and we have a certain check uh, for the status, which you can also find in the components list. So very standard React programming here. If you know React, this should all feel very familiar. So it's the cell that's doing the heavy lifting on the data fetching for us. And so I'd like to very quickly show you how to implement a, a page real quick. So what we're going to do is we're going to implement a page that is going to show you a count of how many to-do items there are. So for that, in Redwood, we have generators that make this really easy. So we can run yarn redwood generate, or just G for short, page, and I'm going to call this page count. And in the routes file, you'll notice that we now have a count page. And that's going to go to the count page that has been created for us. And right now, it's just a little placeholder. But we can go to the URL and see it right here. So that's how we get a page. Very simple. Let's start now on the back side and make sure that we have a query that we can call, call to get the information that we need. So I'm going to start in the GraphQL SDL file, and I'm going to add a query called todos count, and it's going to return an integer. Now we can immediately see in the inspector over here that we have that available to us, todos count, but there's no implementation yet. The implementation happens in the services file. And so I'm just going to export const to do's count. That's going to be a function. And it's going to use Prisma to do a count, like so. So now we have the implementation. Let's make sure it works. To do's count. Execute that. And here we go. To do's count is three. So now we need to pull that into the front end. So we already have our count page. And now we need to create a component that's going to fetch that information. Luckily, we have a redwood generator for cells. So I'm going to yarn redwood generate cell. I'm just going to call it to do's count. And that's going to generate for me the correct components to do a to do's count cell. And in there, it's going to guess what I want. But this isn't quite right. I'm just going to modify this to be the correct query. And then I'm going to display it. In fact, it has some, some suggestions here for what I might want to do. And stringifying it, JSON stringifying it, that'll be a good first start. So this should be a complete data fetching cell. And now I'm going to use that in the count page. So let's go back to count page. I have that cell component. So let's import that. To do's count cell from source components to do's count cell. In Redwood, you can always just reference everything from the source directory. It makes it really easy to find where everything is. And now this cell, I'm going to use instead of this to do count cell. Hold on. And when we do that, we should see we now have our results all the way through with a minimum amount of effort. If we want to fancy that up a little bit, we can modify how this works. So we can say, let's return a string instead of just that, that stringified version there. So you have to do's count to do's in a string. We'll save that. And we'll see that reflected immediately. And there we go. That's end to end all the way through with a complete GraphQL API in Redwood. It's that easy. Now, this is just a simple fetching without any parameters, but it's just GraphQL. We just make it really easy for you set to set the whole thing up. We've only scratched the surface of what RedwoodJS can do. If you want to find out more, go to redwoodjs.com.
If you want free stickers shipped anywhere in the world, go to redwoodjs.com stickers. Thanks for watching.